function in your program you can design the this file system 10k 0 to 1k is for the header is already the predetermined so in your program you can start with such information from 0 or somewhere you can fix make the fixed form doesn't matter it's your job okay then from the 1k plus 1 file and the end of the file is a data and it can be formatted by 256 blocks something like that you need to design and keep the such information in your file and try to read that point but I don't know why many of the students actually hesitate to open the file, read the file, write the file and close the file but if you can do such a thing, it's not a B. Okay, here's uh, another uh, type of the directory structure that is called the acyclic graph directory, which means like the, this one. This one is the, it's not a big problem in directory structure. You can create a file descriptor in this directory and as well as the, this directory. Okay? But this is not, at the time, this is not a tree structure. Tree structure does not allow multi patterns. So at the time we call this one is the graph structure. Okay? It can be inherited by the multiple patterns. Even the directory can be. How can we implement such a thing in the practical operating system, file system? Link, please. Link, please. link. Okay? You can link it. Or in Windows, we can use a shortcut. Okay, so you don't have to create the another file of this. So when the physically there is just only one file, but it can be linked. So there are two types of the link actually in operating system. One is a soft link, another one is a hard link. Which means so in this directory we have a.txt file and Another user, James, would you like to link the, this one? At that time, you can use the L and command with the minus S option softly. Then the source and destination, which means a.txt, at that time, you can you need to give home slash lead slash a.txt to a.txt, which means you can see a.txt. However, this is not the file that includes the data. This is just a link to this one. This one has a physical the story. Okay. If something change, this one automatically change. Can you remember the view in the tape the database? It's the same thing. It's a virtual table, virtual file. It's a soft link. There's another types of link is a hard link. Hard link means when you create a link for this one, you can see the a.txt file, but it's a physically copied. The difference between the two separate files with, with the, this one, the hard link means whenever this one is changed automatically, apply this one. They are hard link, clone, physically located. It looks like the materialized view in database concept. But shortcut in Windows system is limited. Okay? You can adjust the, the soft link and about the ATA.txt file from the original directory structure. What if this one? So it's called the dangle the file. To address the problem, actually there are different solutions. One of the solutions is the each file keep track of who is linked. Link list. 
you can manage such a thing in case it uh, disconnect uh, such a link, we can find it here. There are different solutions, but it's not completely. Okay. So this is the general graph directory. The difference is, you can see, this one is link to a group. Okay. You can see the circular. We, we don't know who is the parents, but that is possible. The problem is sometimes you, if you disconnect, disconnect, there is the isolated one. From time to time, you need to collect uh, such garbage information. So that is called the garbage collection, just like the memory garbage collection, you collect the uh, uh, isolated data. Well, file system mounting. So I create uh, such a separate file system. I'd like to use uh, this file system in the move to the home uh, slash lead slash file system slash. Okay? At that time, you can create a link to the, this uh, file. Okay? Now, file, not directly, entire file system can be linked. That is called mount. You probably heard about the, what is a mount. So, Simplest idea of such a mounting is a USB hard disk drive. You can connect it anywhere. Sometimes it can be C, it can be D, it can be C, depending on the operating system that you use. But what about the file system in the external hard disk drive itself? Any changes? No, it's nothing changing. Okay? Under that mounting point, you can see all file system structure. That is called the mounting. So that point is called mounting point. For example, this is the my file system. You can disconnect this one, you can replace this one. You can see it from the root, you can see such a thing. This point is called a mounting point. If we type the mount command, you can see how many file system are mounted. Some of the, for example, are you using the G drive nowadays? G drive. Yeah. Yes. Some of you students, because uh, we have the very simple <laughs> the memory stick, you don't want to, but the long time ago when I was a student, we used a lot for D drive. Because at the time, the four over the file hard disk drive are not popular. So when you log on any computer, you can see the D drive. How? There exists somewhere the physical your file, okay? So I save the a.txt file here. So no matter where you connect the, no matter where you log on, as soon as log on, so there exists the mounting point, C drive over there. Then connect to this one. If you log on here, connect to this one, okay? That is based on network file system, NFS mounting. Okay, that is the uh, way. So this is the such a thing. So you can see this one, for example, home, e, say, whatever. This is a mounting point of this user on. It's a different uh, the server. It's a Zeus and export home. It's a mounted to this one. Then you can see. So you are fine. Anyway, also you can see the overview of the resource usage of your file system using DF command. This file, I'm not sure. Minus K means mostly, most of the K option in Unix system is kilobyte. Okay, all data are kilobyte. Otherwise, it's just byte. This one shows the capacity of um, that, okay? And use available and capacity. And protection. Mm. Basically, the operating system use, most of the operating system use the group 
and user ID for protection of the file. The group, the user means the owner of the file. Okay? And another level of the protection, protecting your file is group, means so I each user belongs to one or more group. So if the user, two user belongs to the same group, they can access the file. If you allow the, your file permission to the group, okay? So like, what about the Windows? Windows has administrator group, guest group. You can create the, your own group. Then you can assign the user, okay? And Linux is the same. When you create the user, you specify the default group. So you don't have to give the permission, grant the permission for each user, for each file. Just give the group name, student group. So for example, you can see the, this is a username and this is a group name. So I'm in the Ruby step group. So all permission, all the, uh, Protection level and security level are assigned to the UV step. It automatically assigned to my user. Okay, so that is the reason. There's we need the user ID and group ID to create. How many group ID? You can assign many group ID to the user. There's a one more thing in practical implementation of such a protection. That is public. If a file is assigned to the public group, public means anybody can access such a data file. Okay, so three level. The user is only for user. And group is a full group to any user that belongs to that group. Okay? And third one is a public. So public is anyone. So such a group and the owner and public are managed by the ID, group ID, user ID. So user name is not important. Instead, user ID and group ID will be checked. So that can be important in the remote file system. So for example, if you, a file is over here, and if you want to mount from the remote side, the user ID and group ID should be matched with the user ID and group ID in your file system. If the ID are different, then even though username are the same, you cannot access such a data. Protect such data. There are different types of access. We write, everybody know, and execute because it's a program. So executable program can be executed. So you need to can specify read, write, execute. These three are the main types of access control in Unix and Linux system. Windows are quite similar. Okay, and there are more. If you wanna. The specify the details of such a types of access, you can specify append, delete. Append, delete usually belongs to write, modify. And list belongs to the read or execute in directory structure. So this is the example of the access control in Unix and Linux system. I will explain the, this part in the next class. Then we'll continue the next chapter. Any question? Okay, thank you and the see.